And I actually pulled out my vote like a boss shirt for you. I haven't oh, worn it. Oh, I love it. I love it. Oh my gosh. Can you hear me and see me now? Yeah, I can. Okay, awesome. Oh my God. So nice to see you. You too. <laughs> I hope you have a printed copy of the paperback handy because I have only seen it as an ebook. Oh, no worries. Do you, have, do you have a paper copy handy that I can? Just see, yeah, I love to see the physical, beautiful. Oh, I love it. Yeah, so I think I told you when we spoke before that I did everything in purple. Uh, yeah. One, because of the women's suffrage movement was uh, the colors were purple and white. Mm -hmm. And then two, because I didn't want to get caught up in political parties in oh. the US, yeah. I want to be about voting as uh, a leadership skill, personal development, you know, self improvement, yeah, self self determination, <laughs> like those types of things. So, yeah, um, yeah, and I love purple. So, yeah, I this is yeah, it's beautiful. It looks like it's a matte. Did you choose matte, or is it a glossy cover? Yeah, I ended up choosing matte because I love the uh, texture of it. Mm -hmm. uh, it. It's sort of a rubbery matte cover. This particular what I chose, and then yeah, it's very simple. So purple and white, and because the collection of essays and speeches, I decided, because I, I speak a lot, um, that uh, I would have this sort of graphic here, which yeah. will be my speech series, because I've talked to, to myself, I've talked about doing that for a long time, converting my speeches into a collection, like some sort of collection and, and as a book. Um, I miss that. That's like a very old school thing to do, but I miss mm -hmm. that. And um, I take my speech writing very seriously. Well, you've sort of yeah. said Oh my gosh. Yeah, no, I love the books. I love, I love, I got, I got goosebumps. I could not stop smiling. Like the word that comes to my mind is, is so many words come to my mind, but gorgeous, <laughs> and it's generous and it's so much depth and beauty in it like I just I'd, I really enjoyed the generosity of your book I love it oh, thanks yeah so um and and that was the last live speech I did as I mentioned in the book um so I pulled the book together really quickly because I took my collection of speeches and then as you know as a bookmaker and designer I started editing, but I had a I had a time constraint more than most other authors. And I was praying on it because I really started it around the end of July with the idea to have it out by the end of August. And I was like, oh, oh. I can't do this. <laughs> oh you know, this God. is too much. As you know, when you start oh, going gosh. down the actual production part of it and trying to get it to market. And I prayed on it and what came back to me from God is that if you do it in December, it's too late. Mm. And so I just took a leap of faith with it. And uh, and I, I'm happy for that because I got out, had to get out of my own way yep. because I was doing the book for impact versus uh, book sales and mm -hmm. the impact there is a window of impact that I didn't want to lose which then forced me to step mm -hmm. into a flow that most authors including myself would have probably been highly resistant to mm -hmm. I'm grateful for it because I'm proud of the book like the second version will be even better but people loved it it was well received I'll see some of the reviews and and I have oh, a lot to very work. good. They're very positive. But they were very positive and, and they were um totally organic and unexpected. Wow. So, wow. so I am really excited to hear about your pers your your perspective and your wisdom because I when I do uh the revision and episode um season two of the show as well. Mm -hmm. Um I'm like, oh, I have time now to make it better and sort of do it the quote unquote 
right way. Yeah, people, you know, people come up with that phrase a lot for their second book. I've heard that phrase many, many times, but I think there's something super special about a phrase that you use that I've never heard before, window of impact, because that was not arbitrary. That was something that got you motivated enough to create something very special and particular. And I think like, the, I mean, there's a time and a place for, you know, looking at the timeline and all that. But I love, I mean, I've worked this way too with one of my books is a window of impact. There's something specific that you want to do or an impact that you want to have. And that's an incredibly powerful way to write a book. Actually, I've never thought of that before. Yeah, it's incredibly powerful and also like stressful <laughs> way to write a book. And, and <laughs> But it can be fun too, because I really had to surrender my to the process so for example i need to go back and clean up some of the description text the formatting on amazon mm -hmm. um but for the most part even when i look back on it now i mean there's also the editing right so because yeah. i was editor and designer yeah. and yeah as well as the writer i'm still really proud of it like i'm really happy that i did it and Ironically, um, I was telling someone that I'm working on the revision in season two uh, yesterday, an email, and they were like, awesome, want to invite you to this event we're having with Stacey Abrams, who's a big political activist in the US. And unless I did it the first time or telling people I'm doing it the second time, then I wouldn't have had the opportunity to engage with all these people that I admire in this space, right? Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. real life, I'm a tech entrepreneur yeah. uh, versus being a, a, a social activist, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Well, Incredible. And so I love the title of your book. And so I'm curious what, whether that just popped into your head or whether that was like, what was the process? Because a lot of authors do struggle with this important part of the process. And so, and I find that it happens so differently for everybody and each book is unique. So how did that go for you? Did you are always knew, know you were going to call it that or? Yeah, um, I had journaled on uh the importance of voting and as a leadership skill back in 2016 20 yeah like 2016 or 2015 right? i can't remember exactly maybe it was even 2017 afterwards in frustration i have to go back and look but i've been journaling on it uh before and um just, you know, in that entry, it was a lot of talk about, you know, if you want to be a leader, if you want to be a founder, people were super into startups, you know, it's a mindset and a skill set around personal leadership, and it extends to every area of your life. So, for example, if you don't speak up in rooms or in classes, then you're less likely to speak up for your dream. If you uh don't think your vote matters you probably won't think your dreams or ideas or inventions or innovations matter either it's different sides of the same coin so you want to practice taking yourself seriously in every opportunity that you can including with voting because it'll have an impact on how you view yourself in the world yeah um so i think the original journal entry was something like you know uh, you know, voting is more than politics or policies or candidates. It's the in, uh, individual act of self de like declaration of what matters to you. It's a leadership skill. It's about taking yourself seriously. And I remember truly uh, that the ending was something to the extent of, wow, and if you don't think your vote matters, you won't think your dreams matter. So good luck with that. Yeah. And so when uh, I when this election season was coming up, I had written expanded out that journal entry into an essay and integrated it into the speech that that was going to give for uh, 2020. And I was supposed to give it a variety of different places, mainly 
spaces around creativity and entrepreneurship and innovation. So I would ask permission to uh, have this be a part of my speech because people were <laughs> very, felt very strongly about politics. Yeah. Um, including I was, you know, was starting off with a couple of government agencies, federal agencies at that. So one, I can't even mention the agency, um, but the other one, as you know, was the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office. So getting clearance to talk about it generally, but I was supposed to do, uh, I had a bunch of speeches booked for 2020. So when I, I was, felt down and frustrated that I couldn't give those speeches, especially with the anniversary of the women's right to vote and the civil, the Voting Rights Act. Um, so when I converted to a book, I didn't have to, I didn't do any A-B testing, you know. I knew it was gonna be Vote Like a Boss and it was gonna be this, those collection of essays and, mm -hmm. uh, including The Power of We, which I wrote in early 2016. And it was related to the rise of the, like I was in the UK with Brexit and in Europe during the rise of the, the alt-right that they call themselves and, and people turning to team me versus team we. And I actually gave that speech first in Italy. Um, Sky Italia in Bologna on a Friday night because Italy was also uh, turning uh, towards the team me and they did end up tur turning and Brexit did end up happening because the second place I gave it was in London mm -hmm. and then the third place was in Chicago in the US. Mm -hmm. um, so being able to include all those essays and messages that I, I wanted to get out in the world that had been getting out live and compiling it into the book mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. was important to me. And I guess the only other title that I considered if it wasn't an election year would have been The Power of We. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I just really, I really, really love how you take these things that sometimes we get mixed up into thinking they're just external, you know, like our career success, our or, or civic participation, these kind of external things. And you really are so clear and consistent about tying that in to things that are internal and spiritual and and deep. And I think that's so beautiful and that's so powerful. And that's what really speaks to me about your book. It's just, you talk a lot about faith. And I, I personally, I tend to use the word trust a lot more, but I'd love to hear too about how, like when you're, you were talking about when you're, when you're feeling down, like how do you get back into that like flow of trust and faith and love? How do you get back there? Um, well, I think of faith as an action. And so uh, just like with you know, in the morning, I reconcile my accounts, I meditate and pray, mm -hmm. I uh, pull, I, I try to act from a place of faith. So I'll be creative or do something that makes me nervous or scared or that I don't fully understand how to get to the outcome. Like I, if, if, well, you read, you know, the book, you know, that I've pushed myself uh beyond many sort of society limits uh, all the time and most of the time when i'm doing it it's to experience my faith oh, so I just like well, doing the book i like i like to say you know god was my editor god was my agent god was my you know uh mark head of marketing or whatever i don't even know what you call the person because i just did everything just for <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, and then also I, I did a show as well. So I didn't just do the books. I was learning all these new things at one time. And, and it was an act of faith to do it because um, unlike you, Andre, I had no idea what I was doing <laughs> with the book or with the show. Amazing, amazing. I love it. And I really, I loved also the essay by your mom. I felt like that was just something really, really special. Yeah, it was really important to me to include her in some way because the story 
uh, arc, the, the most recent part of our story as far as, you know, human rights and unity and civil rights uh, in the US, um, the big push was, as we all know, around Martin Luther King. And that was her generation. Like she actually lived it. And I think it's so important in the world for us to always remember that we're part of this grand relay race. And that uh, to me, like, I think we get caught too caught up in our individual lives uh, forgetting that time goes by so fast, even if we live to be 100 and healthy, mm -hmm. it'll still go by really fast and it's still really not that much time. So mm -hmm. if you focus too much on just what you can get done in your own lifetime, mm -hmm. it's uh, to me uh, a bit of a path towards like insanity in a way. Like the more you get caught up with yourself, the more uh, I think mental health issues you have. So in looping back to my mom, my mom was a way for me to give, like extend my platform to her, give her voice and also to show the path that we're on so that there's a sense of, you know, things have gotten better, things have changed. Um, you know, there's, there's this, perspective from then and now, um, but just in a, in a small way. Like I would have loved to do it, have done it in a grander way, but I just didn't have time. So I would have loved more voice from that generation. Um, for example, for the, the second book, I still need to do it, but I'm gonna reach out to Oprah's publisher because she had written this essay about this man who, you know, went through all these uh, shenanigans to try to vote and walking, you know, miles and miles and miles and being told, oh, you need to, you know, you, you need it to have brought, you know, uh, uh, not a utility bill. Like I can't remember the story very well. So it's sort of uh, might be a bad example, but yet a good example in the sense that he would get, you know, he would go to polling place after polling place. No, you're supposed to go to that one, you know, five miles away. You're supposed to go to this one, two miles away. Like no matter which one he went to, they would give some excuse as to why he couldn't vote there. Like, oh, you need to guess the number of MMs in the straw. You got it wrong or whatever. So he had literally spent the whole entire day trying to be able to vote. And uh, he didn't get a chance to vote that time. And it was just before the Voting Rights Act to get rid of those shenanigans. And then uh, before the next election came up, he had passed away. So she talks about how, you know, that's part of her motivation to always vote. So I want to have, be able to include a wider variety of voices. I want to be able to include international voices because I've been to 52 countries. I see what people go through for the right to be counted. Mm -hmm. um, I have some of those stories. Um, so yeah, that was, my mom was sort of a proxy for all of that, uh, given the time and the resources that I have at the moment. Just like, um, the prayer for those inspired to vote was a proxy for bringing faith more into it. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, our belief in unity and connectivity. Mm -hmm. And if, if that is there, then that's also a reason to vote because the consequences can extend far and wide and impact so many people beyond just yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. That's great. I love that prayer too. I love how the author called God the author, called God the author of life. That was so beautiful. I've never heard that before, but it's really cool. <laughs> yeah. I was speaking to Pastor Beverly just a couple of hours ago, and she she really embraced the concept of a book capturing uh, the importance of voting for the person versus for the country. Mm -hmm. Mm. That's great. Very unique. Mm. Now, I, I, do you have any questions for me? Uh, I do have one more question for you, but 
you want to ask me? Yeah, I mean, I have a lot of questions <laughs> for you. So maybe we'll do the last question yeah. you have for me yeah. and then flip the switch. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I was thinking um, too that I'm happy and any time to offer suggestions or whatever, but I, I wouldn't want to bring any kind of a critique into the session because I feel like it's the spirit of it is more about celebrating what you've done and the fact that I love this. We're not waiting for everything to be perfect. We're just moving ahead and then going with that flow of that. And then that's, I think that's just really, really powerful for, for anyone working through the self publishing process really. Right. Like even in traditional publishing, they still print books with typos that happens all the time. And so this idea that we have to have a perfect before we can move forward, I think is, I mean, obviously we do our best and that's important, but yeah, I think so. I mean, I am a lifelong entrepreneur and I've done a number of startups. And so I know I have a bias towards action, even when there's fear, anxiety, and panic. Mm -hmm. Like the only thing that makes me different from everyone else is that I execute and bring things to market because all seven plus billion of us always have great ideas and dreams and strong imagination. That mm -hmm. is a birthright and mm -hmm. a God-given birthright. Like no one can take that away from you. Mm -hmm. the, the difference as an entrepreneur is that we are applied dreamers versus theoretical. Mm -hmm. I love that. That's amazing. It's to market. Yeah. So that helped me a lot. And I teach the entrepreneurial skill set uh, right now, that's my current company. It's an ed tech company. Mm -hmm. So that helps me with everything, like getting, being able to bring my imagination to market uh, was probably 80% of it. Yeah. The other 20% was specific to, it's a book. It's uh -huh. a, a t you know, a uh -huh. video series or a show series or. Right. It's so, merchandise. Yeah. Right. So even when there's fear, you just act. And that's just, that's kind of, that's a big, that's a big seat. That's a big, is that the tip that you would have for a new author who's terrified working through this process and worried about not having. Yeah. It's like, just act. Like if you're want the perfection, the perfection is in the action. So like, if you wait five months to do the first version, then you're still just five, you still have five more months to get to your perfection. Like the, the perfection is in the action, perfection is in uh, other human beings being able to engage with your imagination in the form of drafts and prototypes or manuscripts or whatever you want, storyboards, whatever you want to call it. Um, perfection is in the it being useful or entertaining or inspiring to another human being. Mm -hmm. It's not in the actual content. Yeah, I love that. That's great. That's really, really good. Thank you. I'm so honored to have had this opportunity to ask you these questions and talk with you today. Yeah, me too. And so now can we flip it to <laughs> sure. Um so the, I have like general questions and specific questions. So sure. what would you like to start with? Hmm. Yeah, we just go with what feels like a good place to start for you. I'm fine with Okay, so I'll start with sort of the general question. So I'm on my uh second version of the book, second version of the show. Um, I didn't have the opportunity in the first version to do any sort of book marketing or marketing in general. So with the second version of the book, like where's the most bang for the buck? What are, what is the full book marketing mm. things that I can do as a, a author, like as an individual, or say if I got one or two interns or have my assistant help me that, you know, a reasonable person can yeah. do? Yeah, you know, that's a good question. And that's kind of like the million dollar question that all self-publishing authors are asking. And what I will say, first of all, I know this will sound a little bit vague, but it is gonna be a different answer for everyone because some people are starting out without any social media accounts at all. And they they will have to consider for them what could work for both for them and their target audience 
in order to share their work with somebody. But I have a feeling that you probably have some, so you have some sort of audience already built up that an email list or these kind of things, right? So all these tools are amazing tools and there's some that are sort of more, I mean, I, I think the email marketing is really considered a gold standard because you're speaking directly with people. You're not dependent on Facebook and their algorithm changing and Apple and all this kind of stuff. You're, it's your people, you're speaking to them and it's their email, which is very personal. So I would, I mean, that's a really great way to go. Um, I think that's probably going to be my answer to my main answer to your question. Email marketing is really good. A, a, aside from the obvious, well, it might not be obvious to everybody, but just telling, telling everybody, you know, like I'm keeping a spreadsheet right now of everybody that I've communicated with and talked to and shared my PDF with and all this. And I'm going to go back to them before the launch and email them individually and specifically and say, Hey, thank you so much for being part of my journey. Are you willing to share with your people what I'm doing? And if so, here's how, and be very specific and very clear. And like, I, I'm not expecting anything from anyone, but if they like what I've done and they want to share with their people, then I want to give them that opportunity, right? Who am I to hold them back? <laughs> but sharing, obviously sharing, 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 sharing. And then the different ways is going to be so, so unique to the author. So unique to the author. Like I have one author client and he, he was a journalist and he co he collated all his writings and he he doesn't like social media he doesn't like like those things are just not going to work for him right because he's just not that's not his his world i know it's not me as much either i mean i do to mm -hmm. a, but you know if you've seen any of my social media it's just a little bit you know? okay. <laughs> like just don't even bother if it's stuff you don't like then just don't even bother but you know for you this just popped into my head might be helpful or maybe not but pr do some press book press releases it's not that hard, I don't think, to get, I mean, just, I think your team could really have fun with that. Yeah, okay, so I'll have to look into that. I did do, like, start to pull their uh, press release, but it was just not enough time no. for, and sent it out to a few people, but didn't have mm -hmm. really the space and the time to, uh, I realized, like, with any product, you know, you really have to market it and follow up on it. So um, another general question, and I saw you had addressed this um, in your workbook, which is awesome, thank you. Um, like six months ahead of time, like when, when should you start? Be before I didn't really have that luxury, right? But if I, what, what is like a, a good time table for us self-published authors to think about uh, as far as starting on the marketing part of it. And so the, all the book marketing experts recommend thinking about that before you even write the book, right? So, but you've been through the production process, you have a good idea of who your audience is, but that, I mean, obviously identifying who is most gonna be drawn to your book, who isn't gonna be drawn to your book. These are really key questions, right? To know at any point in the process, the earlier, the better. Uh, but if the book is being produced, say it's being designed and edited and all this kind of stuff, and then you're getting close to the end of that, and then there's like, you're going to think about the, the book description on the back. Is it really going to speak to your audience? Is it full of benefits? Is it really going to call the people? And that's all copywriting that I know you're familiar with. And then, um, and then it's hard it's it's sort of like i love what you said about this window because i find if i had it's kind of like the goldfish is gonna grow as big as the bowl like if you have some reason like see like sometimes my clients will pick uh, their birthday something kind of arbitrary but say you have a, a, a talk coming up and you want to announce your book at that talk then you're going to be like motivated to do everything you can in that time frame and fill that up like a couple months three months i wouldn't say less than one or two months because you want the more people that know about it right the better that is a fantastic idea and i'm gonna write good because as i had started off i told you that there's this event that i'm doing that also someone i admire tremendously in the uh political space stacy abram yeah is also going to be doing, I'm going to be doing it as it relates to entrepreneurship and, yeah. and leadership and, and, uh, and she's going to be doing it as, you know, political leadership. 
uh, two weeks after me. Okay. The organizers were also like, you know, fans of Vote Like a Boss. And they had even asked me just before I came on with you, hey, sit, let us know what you're doing with, you know, this next version of Vote Like a Boss so we yeah. can let her know. So yeah. that, so, and, and I'm a techie, so, you know, I'm yeah. not, but I think that's my moment. Even the book won't be ready by then, but we can announce, oh, we're looking mm -hmm. for contributions and submissions and sort of unveil, you know, season two, vote like a boss. Yeah, that sounds really, really good, yeah. That's a great idea. And then the last question I had, so going to the specifics, well, you've read the book, any, uh, can you give me some feedback as to what you liked and what you would improve? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm happy. I really love, you know what I love? Did you do the cover yourself? It's so cool. Yeah. I love the layout, I love the way the flow, like it's, that's actually what you've done with the text. Uh, the, ti the title needs to be prominent. And then the, I love, it's kind of trendy right now actually to have the subtitle above the title. So that's cool. That's un a bit unusual, but still cool. And then the eye moves upward and to the right, which is my favorite kind of a layout because it's very positive to the, to the woman's face, which is cool. So I think it's great. One thing you might want to consider is getting someone to write a forward. I'm a big fan of forwards because forwards are like a giant endorsement of your book. So you, I'm sure you know somebody who's just like in love with what you're, what you're doing and what you're, and that will be happy to, if, if you want to ask them, if they'll share, like, then you put your, their name on the front, like forward by credible person who is going to add, it's, it's a marketing, it's a marketing thing, but it's, so any, all these little things add credibility to the, to the cover. And I like to do all the little tiny things that the traditional publishers do to add credibility to the book. I do all the teeny tiny, teeny bitty bitty things like having a forward. I always include, I often include um, an advanced review on the back and on the front. So advanced reviews are really a really great way to add that little bit of extra credibility to the book. and. It, it all adds up, you know, they say that social proof is, I mean, Neil Patel, so he calls it uh, like gold, that social proof, right? Like anytime we're gonna buy something, we need some social proof. So those advanced reviews can be really powerful. Um, your book is, yeah, it's wonderful. I, I can't remember some of the details. I'd have to go back through it, the details, but you had a nice table of contents. Um, you might wanna work, I know a couple like incredible developmental editors and what they do is they take people's work and they model it it's almost like they're sculptors of books they find the gold and they enhance they they work they they i i don't really it's kind of like magic to me these developmental editors are often book coaches and say so they will take your raw writing and they'll mold it into like they'll make suggestions and then it makes a, a pretty significant difference. So I know a couple of really, really good ones that if you want to work with a developmental editor slash book coach, these they're that would be cool. What, what sort of um, how does the business model work for them? Like what's the pricing typically? Mm -hmm. A lot of them, I think it would really depend what you're starting with. It depends really how how much content you're asking them to kind of shape so but I think I know I know uh, there actually I have a list of of uh, book coaches in my at the back of my workbook I list the people that I really know personally and uh, many of them uh, many of them are working with first-time authors who really needs a lot of hands-on instruction on how to write so that's not necessarily you so I can't I can't necessarily speak for them what how they would price uh, a book like yours, but I just know that sometimes it's just like, a, a, it's sometimes it's small things like, oh, let's move this here so that this flows a bit better. These kind of things that help the book be more cohesive. So I can't, um, I recommend this to everybody. In fact, my clients all have already worked in 99% of cases, my clients have already worked with a developmental editor and then it gets copy edited and then I get their final manuscript at some point. Mm -hmm. And um, talk to me a, a, a bit more and we'll close out here about what you do for authors. 
Yeah, I love, I love, 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 love. Um, I love, I love especially to help with the cover front and back. Just like I said, to add credibility to the beautiful work they're already doing. And the cover, well, I really like your cover already. So I wouldn't really recommend a lot of um, changes, but maybe a little bit of fine tuning. There's a, like often if someone already has a cover, I'll create variations for them that are just a little bit more bo like boost. I don't know if that's the right word. Um, but I really do love to take and read the manuscript and create covers that really like reflect or bring out what's what's in the book so that's that's where my passion kind of lies is almost taking the energy of the book and making it visual for people because i'm also a writer but i'm a graphic designer and it brings everything that i love to do together when i'm working on the covers the front and the back and working with type is a kind of a specialized skill for graphic designers and i enjoy that Awesome. Well, I really enjoyed this conversation with you today, and I'm looking forward to your journey and the journey with your workbook and sharing my journey with you. I'm so glad that we ended up. Yeah, thank you. Hey, can I ask you a quick question? Do you mind before we close out? I'm, I'm, I, I moved the marketing and book sales section to the front, and now I'm feeling like, like it's too in to in the reader's face. So now I'm wondering if I should just talk a little bit about the marketing at the front, but then give the tactics back in in the chronological order of things. I don't, I'm not sure, I, I, I'm gonna figure it out, but I just wondered if you had any opinion about that. <laughs> yeah, I would say, well, having it up front for me was really good because I'm doing, which very few authors do this, right? Uh, I'm revising an existing book for like another edition already. And with the idea that I would probably end up doing that every two years, right? Yeah, right. And just keep making it better and better and had decided that in the beginning. So that took a lot of pressure off of me. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I can see, especially if you're a novelist, so you're not thinking I'm going to update my novel in like one year or something. Yeah. Whereas for me, I almost um well from the very beginning i took off pressure for myself and was like this is going to be the 2020 version of this but i'll do it again because mm -hmm. uh this this will be important every mm -hmm. two years you right know? yeah um so i was just about to open it again because one of the things that i did did like about it was that it was uh up front mm -hmm immediately made me think about those things because that's exactly what I need to think yeah. about. Right. Um, hold on for one second. And by the way, I love the cover. Mm -hmm. um, just the design as I mean you're a professional designer so that would make sense <laughs> thank you I'm glad No, I, I liked it because it was like in the order. That's yeah. what I yeah. liked about it. Yeah. And when you had that up front and the schedule, mm -hmm. as you saw from my question, mm -hmm. I immediately thought, wow. Mm -hmm. And that's not really even that long, right? Mm -hmm. Like six to seven months or whatever the yeah. number was. Yeah. But um, it did have me thinking and, and start starting to talk to other people about it because I'm yeah. like, if I want to have more momentum by uh, September 15th, which is the International Day of Democracy, which I found out last year, I didn't even know it existed. Oh, great, that's great. Um, that I needed to start now, even in a small way, like your book really acted to start talking about again. Oh, like, great. Even, you know, dust off my t-shirt. So it was good to have a sense of the full 
roadmap and then okay. when you then were like oh the book cover the whatever like it's in a nice mm -hmm. order sort of the order okay. that things would uh come up yeah yeah all right thank you so much yes that helps a lot <laughs> yeah and then the only thing i would say um it would be great to have like a master checklist because mm. <laughs> that's what i do i mean that's the software designer in me like you know i have these sprints and da, da, da. it would be good to have like um Unless if I missed it, but you didn't have a master checklist, did you? Not a master checklist. In the planning documents at the end, I have, um, oh, I actually moved that section. I like that idea, though. You know what? That could be something that I use as a lead magnet. I could say, get your free gift here. Here's your master checklist. I have like every single tiny detail I can possibly imagine in there. <laughs> yeah, so, by section, because I'll oh, probably yeah, yeah, end yeah. up doing that right, anyway. Okay. Um, <laughs> Perfect. Cause I'm always keeping track of so many different types of things. So I have like, you know, spreadsheets that, you know, checklists, I have Trello boards of mm -hmm. checklists for everything. And then I know, okay, mm -hmm. when that window of, uh, when that creative window on that particular project opens, I will, I know I need to do those 15 things. Not going to worry about it until uh -huh. then. No. Uh -huh. Cool. All right. Thank you so much for that idea. <laughs> uh, well, it was really great connecting with you, Andrea. Yeah, thank and you. Have a great afternoon. You too. And I'll send you the recording. There was, I don't think anything that needs editing out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Bye, Tiffany. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye.